They're planning a national strike around election. I know that this, this, this sounds scary, all right, but if all of the militia units across the country <laughs> use the same setup, coordinate with each other, and are on standby in and around election, then guess what? We outnumber them. All right, everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Live from the Lair. And today, I'm going to be going uh, into detail into some of the crazy stuff that Antifa has going on. Now, all of this information comes from open sources. Um, I do have individuals, uh, friends of mine who are still in the service who cannot violate OBSEC by giving me direct information. They can only point me to open source information and uh, I have to, you know, fill in the colors between the lines. They can't help me at all. But, you know, I'm no stranger to this game. I'm just trying to give you guys the information. Now, what I'm going to share with you is a little on the scary side. But if they can plan like this, well, so can the Patriots on the other side, because it's not rocket science. Let's put it that way. Now, uh, I'm going to be touching on Antifa tonight. Uh, I am going to get some information on BLM, go into more detail on how their organization uh, fleshes out. Now, if you haven't seen my past videos in regards to the Civil War and the videos after that that lead up to this one, I would suggest you get caught up um, because you will see that I have touched on this the entire time. I hate to toot my own horn, but uh, pretty accurate. The world does not cater to intelligent people. It revolves around the lowest common denominator. And that's why most humans are easily manipulated sheeple who will put up with anything as long as they get their lard fried burgers from a hole in the wall, free porn, and two day shipping. <laughs> Curse of the High IQ dives into what it's like having your mind held hostage by boring idiots in the rat race of humanity. The cheese is in the description. Okay, now what we have going on here on this board to my right, your left, is basically the country is broken down into five regions uh, for Antifa. All right, we have the East Coast, and in the East Coast, there's DC, Richmond, Baltimore, and Boston. There's uh, other cities in there. Uh, I just didn't put them up here. Um, I don't know if they have enough, um, a big enough organization to make the map or not, uh, but I'm sure they have the ability to call on people you know, if the rub when the rubber hits the road. Now, the DC chapter runs the whole shebang. They go by uh, Jericho. All right. Now, each of the other regions, you know, you have the Pacific, which is Seattle, Portland, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Vancouver. Midwest, which is Chicago, Detroit, Cincinnati, and Minneapolis. Uh, you have the flyover states, Denver, Salt Lake City, and uh, Cedar Rapids, and I believe Colorado's on there too. Uh, over here, uh, let's see, oh, Boulder's on here too. Uh, in the southern states, you got Dallas, Miami, and Tampa you know, in Florida. Okay, now you got Atlanta, you got Georgia, and some of the other states down there. Antifa, they have individuals down there, but the organization is not that big. But what you do have in those states is Black Lives Matter. Now, I'm not gonna add that onto this map because that one is a little bit more crazy. What do we see here? You see a chain of command, all right? Now, they'll say it's not an organization and it's just a bunch of people that are coming together to fight uh, fascism, okay. Well, uh, they are holding meetings, they are recruiting, they are training in hand-to-hand -hand combat and 
apparently it's now moved up to sabotage. Uh, they're using a lot of fireworks and so forth. Now, if we recall uh, the Boston bombing that took place during uh, the, the marathon that they have, uh, two individuals purchased a bunch of fireworks, grinded them up, uh, basically you know, put them in a container inside a pressure cooker and around the container of all that gunpowder, they put ball bearings, nails, and so forth. And they set them out, you know, in the crowd to, you know, on detonators and so forth. Now, the intel I get is, I think, was it two or three bombs detonated? There was, I think, four more found that didn't detonate uh, that uh, really weren't mentioned in the press. Um, I believe they're holding that back for information in regards to finding accomplices. I don't, I don't really know how, you know, law enforcement runs their shit. I'm not a cop. I'm just an old retired soldier. You know, we're seeing that they have a national presence. Okay. And this is just one layer of the craziness that's coming down the pipe. Antifa is using spy craft which is an insurrection formation. Uh, BLM is using the same thing. This is stuff that you, you, that you have to be trained to do this. You need to be taught how to do this kind of thing. Where you keep everything in layers so there's plausible deniability and it's hard to catch a bunch of people all at once. Antifa has a uniform and a dress code. All right, they, they have their own little internal politics and the way they do stuff and uh, Kind of like a secret society, they have a way of identifying each other by handshake or certain code words. Okay, now what they're doing now is they're doing a lot of intel gathering and hacking. All right, now typically when you're gathering intel, you are selecting targets. You are going to run rehearsals against those targets. Uh, to gauge reaction, time reactions, and so forth. That's terrorist kind of shit. So it is what it is. They're go I'm going to go into some of their funding sources here. Uh, apparently they're using Venmo and Cash App, prepaid cards, and there's I think there's a card known as Revolt that they seem to be using. Um, they're using U.S. Treasury money, money orders, and checks from post offices and so forth. Uh, and they keep it below the monetary amount that attracts a lot of attention. For instance, I believe it's five thousand dollars is the is what trips up a lot of the attention from banks and so forth. Uh, in some areas, it's two thousand dollars. So they break up the money uh, between different individuals, keeping them all below the threshold so they can get supplies and do what they have to do without attracting a lot of attention and staying off you know, the radar for the IRS and for uh, laws and regulations in regards to, you know, uh, drug dealing and so forth and illegal activity. Uh, they're getting donations and they're using certain nonprofits to do that. So they're using our own, our own tax code against us and they're not paying taxes on the money that they're gathering uh, because it's under a 501c nonprofit status, which is ridiculous. Okay, now they're using, they're getting a lot of money from Act Blue, which, you know, is basically funds the Democratic Party and BLM. All right, now after the whole BLM thing, you know, went off the hook in, uh, in June, they got, you know, an influx of cash to BLM, which went to Act Blue. And there's virtually no visibility on where that money goes once Act Blue gets their hands on it. So uh, it's going to be hard for them to follow the money because, you know, this is all political goddamn contributions and donations and so forth. You know, this is basically money that's being used for a, a socialist communist coup that's take, it's going to take place uh, in and around election time. Now, their communications are rather sophisticated. Uh, they're using VPN services for um, direct communications over the internet 
and uh, email and so forth. Now, for those of you who don't know how VPN works, uh, you know, the person sending and receiving have the keys and technically no one in between should be able to intercept that. And they're actually using VPN ser services which originate overseas uh, because U.S. companies have to share um, their, you know, encrypted uh, information and um, basically recipes uh, with NSA. And they know that and, and they're using the VPN ser services which originate out of the country. And they don't have to, you know, they have to share that with the NSA or the United States government. So this is going to be hard for them to uh, get around uh, in in and it, when and if they actually go after these fuckholes. Uh, they're using burner phones, and a lot of the older phones they're using uh, for burner phones are ones that don't have the tracking chips. You know, what the Department of Justice can do, especially if you get a phone number, uh, they can try to ping its location. They can do that with a modern phone within five meters. There's a tracking chip in there, it makes it that much easier. Uh, the older phones, it can be done, it's not quite as easy, and the circumference of accuracy, you know, anywhere from 50 to 200 meters. Okay, now, you didn't hear that from me, I'm just telling you, you know, that's, that's just the way it works. So, they're getting a lot of these phones on eBay, uh, and Amazon, and so forth. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. It is what it is. Now, here's another trick they do is uh, everyone in a specific organization, like, you know, say, you know, everyone in Detroit will have an email address and the password to said email address. Um, they log into that said email address and they check the uh, messages saved to draft. Because they're saved to draft, they're not set over to the internet and thus they are not picked up by the NSA and, you know, the U.S. government, which monitors pretty much everything. Uh, the only way they'd be able to get these is they'd have to get that email address and the company that was servicing that email address get a warrant and then go down the chain and get that. And then, you know, if, if I, I don't really know uh, in regards to how long the records are kept at said companies. Uh, I know Yahoo, which is big for this. Uh, if you delete a message from them, it can be retrieved up to 90 days uh, for a civilian warrant and up to 180 days uh, for a government warrant or, you know, the big uh, intel agencies. They also are making pre-made ciphers. Print them up on a sheet, they hand them out to all their people or the leadership, and uh, they can actually call each other on horror lines, say certain code words, which mean certain things, and... Um, if those words are innocuous, it's very hard to uh, find out what's going on unless you have an inside guy who can get your hands on one of those ciphers. They're planning a national strike around election. This is Antifa. BLM is planning to do the same thing. I know that this, this, this sounds scary, all right, but if all of the militia units across the country use the same setup, coordinate with each other, and are on standby in and around election, then guess what? We outnumber them. Because if they had the numbers, they wouldn't have to do all this shit. Okay? If they had millions of people, they wouldn't have to hide it. Because they have millions of people. Millions of people's an army, and that's hard to do anything against. This is scary as shit, but uh, I'm going to be honest. Having the information is half the battle. Being coordinated and ready is the other half. I'm giving you the information. It's up to you to coordinate. Okay, I'm just one guy. You know, I'm a retired, you know, SF dude, you know, who saw this coming a couple years ago. But, uh... That's neither here nor there. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Take it easy.